Ah, FOMO, that tinge of jealousy in the pits of your stomach, that feeling when you look at your friend's exotic vacation photos on Instagram, the admiration you have for your neighbor's new Tesla, the longing for a house as big as your friend's as they tour you around their 10 bathroom vacation home. View, view, view. <laughs> View from every, I mean, literally every room. Even though most of us feel FOMO, we all handle it differently. Some give in, some struggle, some mostly resist, while others stay 100% focused on their own goals in the future. But who are these people? and how do they do it? While those seeking fire like myself are generally natural savers and goal-oriented, even those people, us, struggle with balancing saving for the future and living for the now. Today is the fire movement versus FOMO. It is all about how to avoid the distracting fear of missing out on your road to financial freedom. It's advice to help you feel less jealous and happy and grateful more often. Plus a handful of very actionable tips in the end. My name is Frankie and I love this money mindset stuff. So if you do too, consider subscribing for more from me. Like this video if I earn it, but let's get started starting with some data. 41% of Gen Z and millennial Americans said that they'd like to retire before reaching age 45. Videos including the hashtag early retirement on TikTok have over 140 million views. It's clearly a popular goal and becoming even more appealing every year. However, seven out of 10 millennials experience FOMO, most of any age group, and they're also the most likely to purposefully try to create FOMO among their peers with 33% saying that they've done it. So. Something has to give. How can one effectively seek financial independence, retire early with all this FOMO in the air? Now, realistically, achieving a net worth of 1 million plus in a lifetime is difficult, let alone by age 40 or 45. You often have to go to extreme lengths that requires sacrifice. That sacrifice can absolutely lead to FOMO and jealousy about what other people have or what others are doing no matter what age group you're in. The urge to follow the YOLO crowd can lead to paralysis or recklessness, but I found a friend that can help us avoid all this. Paula Pant. This video was inspired by a podcast episode of Afford Anything by Paula Pant, and I'll summarize the key points from the episode, but I'll also link to it down below. Anyway, Paula is chatting with Jill Saul Sihai about the idea of fire versus FOMO, and Paula starts out by saying, remember, if you say no to an opportunity, there's something else that you do with that time to replace it. You're still living just differently than others. So see that time is replaced, not lost. She goes on to talk about internal scripts that get in our way. It's that voice in your head that says, I can't afford that, or that experience I was invited to isn't worth it financially. This $100 purchase is going to delay my retirement by a year, or spending money on a trip will prevent me from reaching my financial goals. It's FOMO, and then it's that script that kicks in and adds the guilt. It's important to recognize that this voice can be counterproductive to your happiness. Sometimes it is totally okay to do what you enjoy, even if it costs money. Just do it within reason. Do it the smart way so that you can fully enjoy it. She shares an awesome quote that she lives by to overcome the negative scripts, which is, let the heart lead and the mind execute. In other words, seek out what you want to do and then let the mind figure out how to do that thing in the most logical way. She says, begin with what you value. This helps prevent the FOMO. If you didn't value that trip location or having the latest and greatest sports car like your neighbor or staying out all night drinking at the bars with friends, that stuff doesn't matter anyway. You're not quote, missing out. Define the path you're on instead, which by the way, isn't limiting, it's freeing because saying no can absolutely be a good thing. Joe then shares a David Allen philosophy, which is have a mind like water, go where the river is headed. It's about having a clear head unencumbered from distractions. It's removing things in your life that keep you away from your goals, things that create the FOMO in the first place. So to summarize, remember that saying no to something is still saying yes to something else. Everything is a trade-off. It's different but it doesn't have to be worse. Also identify your internal scripts. They're likely counterproductive. Instead, identify what you truly value, then go for what you want. If your heart wants it, your mind will figure it out. Finally, be like water. Remember your goals and remove distractions to get there. I can totally relate to all this and I wanna give some of my own thoughts and experiences to build on this great advice. This had me thinking about the beginning of my journey when it did feel like it was a lot of sacrifice. And the truth is, 
When you're just getting started on your financial independence journey, you very likely will feel like you're missing out. You're setting a huge goal, and in order to get there, it's critical you start out great. Get out of the gate hot. Prove to yourself that you can get on the path and stay on the path. Prove to yourself you can resist temptation. And I did this. The first two or three years, I was very strict with my money and my time. I said no a lot. I pulled back from shopping, hobbies, happy hours, weekend trips with friends, and even haircuts. I was a madman on a mission. I was desperate to get out of credit card debt and then change my life. I was thirsty to learn, and that's how I wanted to spend my time. But the truth is that step back and facing the FOMO helped me learn a lot about what actually is important to me. From there, I was able to add things back in that I deeply missed. Those things were travel, date nights, and going to sporting events, hence my Mariners jersey. And by the way, they're in the playoffs today for the first time in 21 years, so go M's. Every time I go to a game or I go on vacation, I remind myself, this is why I'm seeking fire. This is what living looks like to me. Going through that exercise helps me spend my money on things I truly value without guilt and spending money on fun, guilt-free, feels amazing. Okay, tip time and I have eight for you today. Number one, remember that money is simply a tool to help you live the life you want. When you view it that way, you realize you should start with the life you want and work backwards to figure out how money and how much money can help you get there. Run your race, live your life, follow your dreams and goals, not somebody else's. Number two, focus on progress, not perfection. You will never be perfect. There is no point in trying. It's okay to spend and have fun the smart way on things that you love. It's okay to not hit every single one of your goals. It's okay to retire two or three years later than you planned. Give yourself some grace. Number three, don't compare your daily life to other people's highlights. Social media is very deceiving. No one's life is as perfect as it seems on the surface or on the socials. Again, run your race stay in your own lane, live your dream life. Number four, practice detachment. Speaking of social media, if it leaves you feeling worse and jealous every time you go on it, just don't go on it, it's that simple. An occasional digital detox is extremely good and healthy. It helps keep that FOMO in check and it reminds you to live in the present. Number five, if you know you shouldn't invest based on FOMO, remind yourself it's also no way to live your life. I think this is an interesting analogy that money nerds can appreciate. Don't follow the herd, lead one by example. Number six, express gratitude and reflect on what you do have, not what you don't have. This is self-explanatory, but perhaps a reminder you needed to hear. Number seven, focus on your purpose. And if you don't have one, seek one out. If you do have one, again, be grateful that you do. Each one of us was put on this earth to fulfill a special purpose, big or small, and that is all that matters in the end. And number eight, share in other people's joy and enjoy it with them. Don't hate, congratulate. This will prevent jealousy from festering into resentment and envy, freeing up the energy that you need to create great things in your life. Everybody is entitled to live the life they want and it's going to be different than yours and your goals. We all live uniquely different lives and that's what makes living so interesting and beautiful. We all want to feel secure and happy and in control, but how we ultimately achieve these feelings should be different because last time I checked, no two people and no two lives are the same. I genuinely hope this video got you thinking and that it helped out. Please let me know your thoughts or feedback in the comments or add to my list. What are things that help you deal with FOMO? I always appreciate hearing from you. I read every comment and they also help the algorithm or just say, go Mariners. My name is Frankie. Best of luck on your journey. Subscribe if you want to follow mine and watch this video next to build on today's concept. It's the importance of having emergency fun money. I'll see you there or I'll see you next week on the next one. Thanks.